I'm very nervous to make this video because that means I actually have to read these books or unhaul them and that's not good for me. <laughs> Hey friends, welcome back to my video. I hope you're all good. Today we're going to be doing a video inspired by Becca from Becca in the Books who does this video called These Books Will Self-Destruct in 12 Months. <laughs> and we're going to be doing it today and I am actually wondering why I've done this to myself. It's not too late to like just turn the camera off and pretend I never started filming this video. Are you tough enough for the job? Mm, no. If you watch my channel often, particularly when I do unhauls, you'll know I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like unhauling, but it comes a time when there's a lot of books on my TBR that I'm like, why haven't I read that yet? Why haven't I read that yet? And so I've always watched Becca do these videos and be like, okay, this is entertaining, but good for you. <laughs> and then I've just been having a bit of a talking to to myself lately, and I just feel like I need to start reading books. And we've got 10 books here that I have to read in the next year, or I have to unhaul that. This is, whew, it's making me feel sick. So it's basically to try and make me read them, right? Because I don't want to unhaul these. I want to read them. I own them, right? But half of this is like books that I've owned for a really long time and I don't necessarily, I'm like super excited to read them. Like they're the books that I kind of forget they're on my TBR, easy to look over, you know? And then the other half are the books I keep saying, oh, that's one of the books I want to read the most. That's one of the books I want to read the most, but I keep not reading it because it doesn't fit into videos and I'm not making the effort to fit them into videos because they're not new releases and they're not, you know, do you know what I mean? Those are the books I'm particularly fed up at, but I couldn't make a whole TBR of them because can you imagine if I didn't read them? I think I'd rather delete my channel than like own up to that. So we've gone half the books that like I need to read you or just get rid because my interest is waning and half the books that I keep saying, oh, I have to read that book soon and keep not doing that because I'm a liar. I'm a pathological liar. <laughs> liar! So let's just get into it. I'll start with one of the books that I'm most excited to read and keep saying I have to read and then we'll go into one of the books that I am less excited to read. So this one, <laughs> this one's really risky. I have, ooh, this is a risk. I'm taking risks. I'm living my life. Um, this one's risky because I know there's a high chance that I am not going to read this, but it's one of the books I want to read most. But I just, again, like I don't fit it into videos. It's one of the books I look at daily and I think I need to read you. And it's Unwell Women by Elena Cleghorn, a journey through medicine and myth in a man-made world. <laughs> I might not go back in. I'm going to go home actually. I remember I hauled this last Christmas. It was like a surprise gift. I didn't even know about this book and my boyfriend's mum got it for me for Christmas. And I remember I hauled it and I was like, oh, I need to read this like straight away. I unwrapped it. I found out that I had it in a video in my Christmas book haul. After that, I remember loads of people read this because of me. Loads of my patrons picked it up and were saying how amazing it was. And I know I just need to read it, but it's a fairly chunky nonfiction. And you know, nonfiction I love, but like I just don't prioritize for vlogs because I don't think as many people are interested in. But I often say before I started my channel, I read 50% fiction 50% non-fiction I would alternate between them because <laughs> I'm a psycho and I would line up the next 10 books I was going to read and I'd alternate at fiction non-fiction and that was how I read this is probably one of the non-fictions I want to read the most and I'm literally putting on this list to make me read it I have to read it I love non-fiction about women <laughs> that is probably my biggest interest in non-fiction is forgotten women throughout history or you know inequality for women currently feminist non-fiction I just like I just want to read about women Okay, like that's all I want to do. <laughs> women. You know, I'm particularly interested in how women have historically been misdiagnosed, how there's like, even to today, which is crazy, like women's issues are seen as lesser in, in medicine. Like if you look at menopause, right? I, it's not compulsory, I don't think, for doctors to learn about menopause symptoms and processes and whatever when they become a GP in the UK, which is crazy when 50% of the population are gonna go through it. I'm gay. <laughs> so yeah, I think this is one of the things I'm most interested in. Want to read so badly, but it's been a year almost and I haven't read it. And I know I just need to, and I know I would learn so much and I'd be fascinated and it's gonna be so beneficial to read. So 
That's number one, guys. Are we are we getting heart palpitations yet? Because I am. <laughs> okay, then one of the books I'm less interested in is The Wife Between Us by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekinen. This is one of the oldest books on my TBR. It's one of the few books I've now deleted. This is the only video I've ever privated, but I did a video that was basically my whole owned TBR when I joined YouTube. Guess how many books were on my TBR? Mm, about 30. And I was like, 30 books. <laughs> if you could see me now, Megan. <laughs> Yeah, this is one of the few books left from when I joined BookTube that I still haven't read. And am I going to? I do not want to comment. Why? <laughs> Why? I think I've learned through my reading that I'm less interested in domestic thrillers. This is like as domestic as you can get. Like two women, the ex-wife and the younger wife who's replaced her and like, you know, something going on. But I am interested in Greer Hendrix and Sarah Pekinen. I've never read from them. I feel like I should give it a go. Listen, you've survived this long without being unhauled. You deserve for me to give you a go. It's one that I just need to get to or unhaul. Like it's been on my TBR now for how long? I've been on YouTube three years. My God. <laughs> I was thinking about this, I was thinking about this before I started filming. I still feel new. I still feel like I've just started and I'm one of the newbies. Isn't that crazy? But I've been here three years. Huh. <laughs> the idea of it does interest me and I am interested in reading thrillers, like the big name thrillers like this, Gone Girl, Girl on the Train, you know, that were the girlies back in the day. And like finding out, can I like them or am I just a mystery girl? Do you know what I mean? I don't know. Then one of the ones that I am most excited to read, and I feel like I've spoken about this quite a lot recently, is And the Trees Crept In by Dawn Kurtigich. I want to read this so bad. Two girls go to their aunt's home and it's clear that her house is cursed. The, tr the forest starts creeping in. There's voices, there's secrets. What's going on? There's a tall man with no eyes who plays with one of them in the basement at night. You kidding me? <laughs> and it's told in such an interesting way where there's like letters. Let me, let me come a little closer. Come a little closer, come a little closer, baby, baby. <laughs> Big letters, like the font is always changed up. So I'm really excited to read it. I feel like this, this is like almost a five star prediction for me. And I need to just read it. Like I need to read it or get like, pfft. Can you tell, I'm putting some big guns on this list. I'm scared. I'm super excited to read this. I've heard nothing but good things from everyone who I've heard read it. And I just think it's gonna be, I love a bit, we know I love mixed media. And this is, I would say is mixed media. Like I love books that mess with what a book is supposed to be, right? When I pick a book up from the shelf at Waterstones and it's just like a normal book, doesn't get me going as much as like a little bit of drama, a little bit of theatricality, a little bit of like, you know what I mean? I would be lying to my core if I said that I hope there's no more drama here. I like drama. Drama drives me at times because I think without drama, what's the fun in life? As someone who did drama her whole life, I love, I love putting on a production, right? <laughs> Don't know if you can tell. I love a feeling. I love an ambiance. I love a different, I love creativity. I love that. So here we go. It's gonna be five stars and I'm gonna read it. And you won't, you won't see me unhauling it in a year's time. One of the ones that, I don't know if I'm gonna read this next year, <laughs> but it's one of the ones I'm less interested in. The Cousins by Karen M. McManus. Now, lots of you have told me, do not start here with Karen M. McManus, but it's the one I own. And I'm not gonna buy more until I know whether I like her stuff or not. So Karen M. McManus is obviously the author of One of Us is Lying, which is her big hit series. This is like a standalone about cousins four children are suddenly dropped by their mother with a single sentence you know what you did and they get an invitation to spend the summer at their grandma's resort but yeah lots of you tell me i'm not even gonna like this so like lots of <laughs> i don't read i think enough ya mystery you know gotta look at miss miss holly jackson my queen my angel my love but no i can really enjoy ya mystery and i feel like karen mcmanus is one of the biggest authors for YA Mystery as well. I also, this isn't on the list, but I do know that Karen M. McManus has a story in the Marple Short Story Collection. And I've come to the conclusion, I am not gonna read this until I've one, read at least one Marple novel, cause that's not fair. And I haven't read a Marple novel yet. So I need to get my hands on Murder at the Vicarage. But I'm intrigued to see her in this. So I feel like I should read this as well. How well do you think I'm gonna do? Put in the comments down below at, at the end of the video or now, how many of these do you think I'm actually gonna read? Because uh, I have great faith in myself, it will be all 10. <laughs> okay, this one, 
this is probably one of the books I'm most embarrassed about not having read. And it's Wild Beauty by Annemarie Macmore. If you followed me like last year, right? Last year, you'll know this. I could not shut up about how I was going to read this. I could not shut up about it. Five star prediction. Book I'm most excited to read on every TBR. How did that go for me? How did that go for me? And I would say this was around the same time I was super excited to read In the Hall with the Knife, which I recently read. And I was just, you know, whilst reading it, I was really annoyed at myself that I hadn't read it when I was most excited to read it. That's why some of these other books are on this list because I want to read them before I get to that point where the anticipation is dissipated. And I would still say my anticipation for this is really, really high. I really think I'm going to love this. I don't really know much about it. Everyone tells me just go into me anime like more stuff without really knowing anything. And I'm like, fine. I do that half the time with books anyways. <laughs> I just know we're going to get magical realism, beautiful writing, and I've been told to start with Bard Beauty. So this, if I had to unhaul this, imagine the shame. Imagine the shame that could be enacted on me. So I have to, I have to do it. Then one of the ones that I'm less excited in reading, and this is one that my excitement has dissipated over the years, is Educated by Tara Westover. I know, I can hear you screaming, like, what, Megan? You're gonna love this. You need to just read it. I know. But, like, my excitement for it has just gone a bit, and I don't know what's wrong. Shame on you! Many of you all know this is an autobiography by a woman who was not taught as a child. Her parents were, I think, end of days preparing for the end of days. She eventually gets, what does she get? I think she gets like a master's from Cambridge or something like that. So she eventually goes into education and like kind of teaches herself up to that point. I've heard nothing but good things about this, but I've had it again for a really long time and haven't read it. And it's just, I have to do it or it has to go. Has to do it or I have to set myself free of the burden. It's, it has to be one or the other. I know a lot of you will be like, Megan, you have to read it, you have to read it. But Will it happen? I don't know. <laughs> okay, we have two more on each side of the aisle <laughs> of ones I'm most excited for and ones I'm least. Right, for most excited, I'm still so excited to read Girl in the Walls by AJ Ganusse. I've been so excited to read this since it came out and then I keep like forgetting about it and then seeing it again and I'm like, <gasps> I just want to read it so bad. Like I love the vibes. It's about this girl who lives in the walls of this house. A family moves into the house and he, he sometimes spies a girl from the corner of his eye. He needs her to disappear. And like, is she a ghost? Is she a ghost or is she real? It gives me, oh, I can't say that without spoiling something. But if you were around in 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 2012 and watched a certain horror series and there was a twist, you know, to do with a house, to do with, is there a ghost? You'll know. That's what it's giving me. <laughs> You get me, you get me, you get the vibe. So I'm just really, I really want to read this. I love the edges of this. I think this cover is so gorgeous. This cover was made, but this is all like 2D card that they layered up like in layers going back and took the photo. How cool is that? How cool is that? It's so cool. I feel like not a lot of people read this. It came out last year. I pre-ordered it and everything, guys. It's really bad. It came out last year and I feel like I haven't heard a lot of people speak about it, so I want to know what I make of it. Next, we have Pine by Francine Toon. Hmm. <laughs> this is, I, I think I originally bought it as a thriller. I think it was Waterstone's Thriller of the Month, and that's why I bought it. But then I've actually heard it's more of like a very slow horror. This is about a girl and her dad who see a woman a lot of stumbling across the road on Halloween night. They drive her back to their house. In the morning, she's gone. It's about this small, tight-knit community. And I think it's, I think I might love this, but again, my interest in it has just waned a bit, so I have to read it or get rid. I think this is gonna be slow, haunting, creepy, atmospheric. Spooky, ooky, kooky, and creepy. I do really love the cover as well. Like, I think it's a great cover. I feel like I should read this in the winter time. Maybe I'll get around to it in February. I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> I feel like I need to read this in the winter for it to be fully atmospheric. I know I won't get around to it in January because I know what I'm reading in January. <laughs> Listen, it's blurred by Lucy Foley at the front. She says, I loved this book. Hugely atmospheric, exquisitely written and utterly gripping. Okay, gothic thriller. Oh yeah, you've got me. Gothic thriller, everyone's calling it gothic thriller. Grizzly mystery, occult thrills. 
we're gonna give it a go. And then the last book that I, I looked at all my books for this, right? I wasn't gonna put like my newest releases on here. I knew that the books I wanted to put on here were books I'd had for a while because then I'm justified in saying to myself, right, you have to read this next year or get rid. And this is another book that I've owned since I started my booktube channel and still haven't read. And it's been highly recommended to me by my mum. My mum read it. People that I follow, like booktubers have since read it, like Kayla's read it. I've owned this since I started my channel, three years I've owned this and still haven't read it, but I'm so excited to. And it's Biased, The New Science of Race and Inequality by Jennifer Eberhardt. I I've wanted to read this so bad for the past three years. And again, non-fiction, I'm just not good at fitting it in. So this is all about unconscious bias and looking at it scientifically. So when you look throughout, there's like pictures, graphs and stuff, how we think, and it's studies that show how humanity makes uh, perhaps bad assumptions based on ingrained thought processes. And that is just so interesting to me. I have never heard a bad thing about this. I've only heard wonderful reviews. My mum loved it. I know Kayla really liked it. And I feel like I've read a lot of nonfiction lately that's more like memoir based or like, just like more personal experience based. And the stuff I'm more interested in reading now is like, expert stuff. So that's why I'm super excited to read both of these. These are both very like sciencey, looking at something I'm interested in through a science lens. And I feel like that's an angle that I'm excited to read through at the moment. And then finally, I'm putting a series on here. I'm putting the next installment in a series on here because I have to read it. I don't know if any of you all know this book. It's The Jeweled Moth, The Second in the Sinclair Mysteries by Catherine Woodfine. This is a middle grade mystery series, which I started in 2020. I did a video where I read three middle grade books. They were all starts of series. I have not continued with a single one of them. I'm sorry, it just hit me just now. So I have to start making progress in them or just DNFing them. <laughs> This was a really fun mystery series though. I think it's like 1920s and it's set at this department store called Sinclair. So very like um, Selfridges. And it definitely plays up on like its historical setting and like the vibes. And I don't know, I really enjoyed the first one of these. This was I think my lowest rated series out of all the ones I start in that video. So I feel like if I don't make progress in this in the next year, should probably DNF. So there we have it. That is the 10 books that I have to read in the next year or I have to unhaul them. Oh my God. I can't believe I've just filmed this whole video. I'm still in shock that I'm doing this to myself. But please let me know which of these you think I should prioritize, which ones you think I will enjoy. And yeah, let me know how successful you think I'm actually gonna be at this. Cause these are again, not the books that are like planned for in the next videos that I'm doing or whatever. Like they're books that I'm gonna have to really make an effort to get to and fit into vlogs. Otherwise I have to unhaul them. That's so much pressure. Oh my goodness. So yeah, please let me know what you think I should prioritize. Leave the crying face emoji down below if you've gotten to the end. Cause I am really sad. <laughs> So leave that down below if you got to the end. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye.